We are back with 96 days until college basketball season for another team countdown preview. And today we have the High Point Panthers checking in at number 96. But before we get into High Point and talking all about them, uh, just make sure to follow Hoop Scoop Media on Instagram and on Twitter. Really helps us out, really helps us get more notifi- notifications, more just, yeah, it really just helps us grow. And, yeah, subscribe to us on YouTube as well. Turn on those post notifications so you don't miss any of our top 100 countdown videos. And, yeah, also follow Luke at College Hoops Outlet on Instagram at CHO Talk Sports on Twitter. But, yeah, number 96, we have High Point. Like, two years ago, did you ever think we'd be doing a top 100 countdown and have High Point in there? Uh, no, I can't, I can't say I would, but it's been – a big turnaround these last two seasons. Yes. Um, once they hired Alan Huss, last year was his first year. And his first year, he led them to their best year in program history, finishing 27-9 on a season. And yeah, just by far the best season that High Point has ever seen. And yeah, they had a really good offense, like top 40 nationally. Their defense was not great, but yeah. They won the Big South regular season and then lost in the conference semifinals. So pretty successful year overall. Definitely had the opportunity to get to the tournament. Did not get, do that. But considering where they were two years ago and how good they were in the first year of the Allen Huss era, definitely, definitely a big step in the right direction for High Point. And yeah, they actually do have a lot returning from last year's team, but they do lose one. Major piece that is Duke Miles, the uh, the guard. He is off to Oklahoma, where I think he honestly will be pretty good. But yeah, averaged seventeen point five points, two point four rebounds, three point six assists per game, and Big South newcomer of the year, member of the Big South first team. So yeah, that's a pretty big loss. Um, they also lost some smaller pieces to the portal, such as Cade Potter, who uh, committed to D two Cal Poly Humboldt. Denzel Hines, who committed to Coastal Carolina, and Pablo Zubia, who transferred to Eastern Washington. But overall, like for a mid-major like this, only losing one guy, but when they have a lot of guys I think high majors would want is very impressive. Yeah, and they've got a couple guys who have spent time at high majors before. Abdul Atheon was at Minnesota for a year. Yes, um... Kamani Hamilton, another one at Mississippi State. But yeah, just I think that really speaks to High Point's NIL. They definitely have money compared to the rest of the conference. But even then, um, the big schools are always going to outbid. It's funny because when I was doing this preview, I was reminded that for like a few days, Jeremy Fumena was committed to High Point, the Rhode Island transfer, and he was going to be their backup big. Then he ended up transferring to Mississippi State instead. So that's that's just like crazy but anyway yeah i don't think high point really needed him would have been nice but like it's just crazy like how and we've been hammering down to bigs in the portal that's like the biggest example yeah i mean this is a pretty stacked lineup to be sitting in the big south yes but yeah speaking about the roster besides duke miles they have every starter from last year back headlined by kamani hamilton as we mentioned earlier coming into his second year with the Panthers after playing a season at Mississippi State. And yeah, he just is truly a level above the Big South. His athleticism, physicality, just all that is just not... I mean, he was a high major recruit, and that showing in his game last year, yeah, can really just get to the rim. Pretty good passer for his size. Yeah, good rebounder. And I think he can even take a bigger jump this year potentially being more of a featured option, not that he wasn't last year, but without Duke Miles in the picture. Um, yeah, he he's really good for the conference. Yeah, there's there's definitely more touches on the ball open for him now. Um, just a great rebounder and then gives them that solid presence inside, one of the best athletes in the Big South. Yes. Um, they do return Keza Jiffa, who had a really strong last season, actually came off the bench, for most of the year, only started nine games on the season, but he had a big year. Um, yeah, the thing that really stuck out to me about him 
was how well he was able to get to the free throw line and how much he was able to convert from there. He actually made the second most free throws of anyone in the country last year, only trailing, obviously, Zach Eady. So, and he's he's a guard, so he can really get to the rim, had some huge scoring performances, um, had 37 when they beat Winthrop. So, yeah, he, he's, he's a big-time He's a big time scorer, and yeah, I think he's another guy that could benefit without Miles. I know some of his huge games were when Miles was actually hurt for a little bit in the season. So, what what are your what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, he's definitely he definitely has a chance to get more touches, just like Hamilton, great scoring guard. You mentioned gets to the free throw line a lot. I think about <laughs> six of his sixteen points a game uh, came from the free throw line, and then another guy that transferred down. Albeit slightly, came from UTEP last off season. So another, yes. I think he, I think it was JUCO, or it was UTEP then JUCO, then high gotcha. point. But yeah, yeah, another guy that's definitely, uh, yeah, that kind of made his way through the transfer ranks, JUCO, and yeah, very good pickup by Huss and was immediately impactful there. Um, another guy returning, um, that's Juslin Bodo Bodo returning for his sophomore season. He was. He had a huge freshman year, really won the most underappreciated freshman in the country, in my opinion, just by how good he was. Obviously, his scoring numbers weren't uh, lighting the page on fire, which is why some people might have made gloss over him. But he was so good as a freshman. Obviously, being seven foot 240 will definitely help when he's just such an athletic specimen, physical specimen, compared to the rest of the Big South. But he made an impact from day one, was the second best offensive rebounder in the country by percentage with 19.8 offensive rebounding percentage, which is crazy. 7.9% block rate, just a beast down there. One big South freshman of the year and big South defensive player of the year as a freshman. So I'm just excited to see what steps he take. Maybe he takes, maybe he grows his offensive game a little bit, but he is, he is a monster. Yeah. And I think, I think the scariest part about it, is with Boto Boto and Hamilton, they both have another year after this year that they could come back, yes. and they then have two two more or yeah or Boto Boto, 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 Boto will three. Have two. yeah Hamilton, Hamilton yes, but yeah but yeah that, elite that rebounder court. and paint protector just yeah more room to grow now and that front court's going to be dominating the Big South for as long as they stick around. Yes, um, you mentioned earlier, but Abdullah Tiam is also back. Um, former Minnesota Golden Gopher, as I know, you're probably very familiar from, with him from there. So yeah, you can uh, you can take this one. Yeah, I mean, his time at Minnesota was short lived. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was quite ready for the high major level. I thought he probably could have went back up there this year if he wanted to, but he's been a solid scorer on the wing the last two years with High Point, averaged 13 a game this past year. Um, just gives them another option. Uh, Jiffa and Hamilton will probably be the lead two guys, but another guy that can score. Yes, yeah. So, um, definitely nothing crazy compared to those other two guys have more like specific strong suits. He's just a very solid wing player that uh, he's actually like the only guy maybe that like stuck, stuck around through the coaching change and fit right into Huss's team. So, yeah. Um, Trey Benham started every game last year, also returned pretty low usage player, but um excels in the catch and shoot game. Um, yeah, connecting on 37% of his threes last year. So it's always nice to have a guy that uh doesn't do much, but he can come in, doesn't do anything stupid, and knock down some threes. Yeah, you always you always like to have a good shoot shooter or two off the bench. I think this high point roster has that. They can get yes. scoring from everywhere. Yes, um, a few other returners, uh, Titus Sergunis, um, international returner, um, played a few minutes as a freshman last year, nothing crazy, but got some solid-ish minutes considering how good of a team he was on, and um, yeah, saw some solid minutes in conference play, nothing crazy, but we'll see if he can expand his game this year, and then Liam McChesney also returns, did not play last year, but yeah, he should be back on the court this upcoming year really good shot blocker um can shoot a little bit for a big man nothing crazy but can space the floor definitely for his size so should create a good 
uh, big man duo with him and Bodo Bodo. So yeah, those are all the returners. And the crazy thing to me going into their transfer class is that they only really lost Duke Miles um, from last year's team. That's notable. But then they brought in so many guys that are going to be like good. So yeah, they they brought in four solid rotational guys. McChesney yes. coming off the off the red shirt, and then Sargunas um, coming back. I feel like the the rotation is pretty full for them to get any heavy minutes. I think or I think Mc... McChesney will play. Yeah, he's the he's the only like true backup big they have, so I yes. think he finds time. But yes, um, but yeah, I think speaking about transfers, I think uh, Bobby Pettiford. I think he will find himself in the starting lineup as a point guard. Don't know exactly what they're going to do. They could do a, so many different things because of how deep they are, how like versatile they are. But I think there is a good chance that Pettiford starts. I believe he is from North Carolina originally. So returning, I guess he was at East Carolina. So he's been in the state. But yeah, continues to stay in his home state, moving down level. Um, but yeah. He never really panned out, started at Kansas, and I kind of liked the flash that I saw from him at Kansas, but never really worked out. Went to East Carolina, was okay there, um, was a good passer, um, solid assist rate numbers, but not not a great season overall, but I think Hus can definitely unlock his offensive potential, and I think he will, I think he'll be pretty good at high point. Yeah, I, I like what he has surrounding him, and he's in the Big South, so I think he'll be able yes. to to be more of that pass-first point guard, um, still giving them that scoring ability, but he won't need mm-hmm. to score as often. Yes. Um, another player actually returning to the Big South, that is DeMorean Williams from Texas Tech, formerly played at Gardner-Webb, where he was really good at Gardner-Webb, was an all-Big South selection, can really shoot the ball, Never really was able to get his groove going at Texas Tech, but just seeing what he did in the Big South three years ago, um, definitely have to be excited after spending some time, albeit not playing at Texas Tech necessarily, but he spent some time under some pretty good coaches. Grant McCallison's an elite coach, so definitely like to see that and coming back to a conference where he really dominated a few years ago, so... Yeah, th- this was an all Big South player, what, two years ago? And now he comes back to the conference and he's going to be more than likely coming off the bench. So that just shows you how deep this team is. Yes. Another player that can be really good, and I don't know whether he's going to start or come off the bench, but that's Terry Anderson from Lamar. He was really good at Lamar. Lamar really had like a resurgence here. They were definitely a lot better than they've been in the past. And a lot of that was due to Anderson. He was extremely versatile, just got a lot of things done on the floor. Just, yeah, efficient scorer, really good rebounder, could pass the ball, can defend, really has it all. Not not a great shooter, Um, can make a three here and there, but yeah, really solid overall player. And I'm wondering if he might start over Tiam this year at that three. I haven't really, their lineup is, it can go so many different ways, but like yeah, I've seen projections where he's like the eighth man. Like, dang, like he was like Lamar's best player, and he is really good. So the high yeah, point money I, came through. I think he he he's definitely different than Theum. Definitely a lot better of a defender, and I, mm-hmm. there's definitely time in that rotation for him. Either way, 15, 20 minutes a game. Um, he can he can do everything just solidly well, and then um. Gives you gives you a lot of length on the defensive side of the ball. Can play the three or the four. Yes. Um. The last transfer, maybe the last transfer. We'll we'll have an extra note later. But yeah, the last transfer that we know for sure is Chase Johnston coming over from Florida Gulf Coast. He was hurt most of this year, so I think he has two years of eligibility left. Even though he's been in college for like, I think this is his sixth year, but because he redshirted, played the COVID year. Yeah, this is going to be a sixth year, and he'll have a seventh if he wants it. Um, but yeah, he can really shoot the ball. Like that's his thing. He fires him away from three. Um, he's made two hundred seventy six threes so far in his college career. So yeah, he just can really shoot. And high point really as good as their offense was. Like they weren't really like a big shooting team. So he and like a few other guys they've gotten uh, such as Williams 
really add that next dimension to the team. Yeah, I think that's why you can get away with putting Anderson in that second unit because of these uh, shooters that are going to surround him on the court. Um, 37.6% career for Johnson, you mentioned. A bit of a fall off last year. I'm not sure if that was he was, he um, was hurt. A, a nagging injury. I know he only played nine games. Yeah, but. I mean, sample size is hard to like. Like, if he would have played a whole season, it probably would have yeah, worked itself back sure. up. But yeah. I agree with that. Then they also maybe got William Patterson, the Syracuse Retro freshman. Um, I'm not sure if he's actually on the team. No, they had High Point is not officially posted to roster yet. So we're not sure. Um, because he did post a commitment to them about a month ago, but he deleted that post off Twitter. I don't know what that means. High Point hasn't actually announced anything on their end about it. So I don't know if they did back when he officially announced it. Um, so I don't know if he'll be joining. I think they're full on scholarships without him, but I don't know what it's going to be like. I don't know if he's ever going to play for high point, but if he does, it gives him another big presence. I don't think they need him, but if they get him, that's he's seven, two in the big South. That's, it's not a bad thing to have if they might have that. So, but yeah, Huss did bring two freshmen that we know are going to be on the team for sure. One of them is Braden Housen, the, uh, Younger brother of now Kansas State guard, former Villanova guard, Brendan Housen. But yeah, um, Braden, a little bit different player than his brother, Brother, a little bit bigger, um, a little bit more of an overall player all around. Um, and then they also got a big man from Australia in Joshua Ibunkunoloa. Um, I probably mispronounced that name, but yeah. He's been playing NBL one, which is like the uh, lower NBL league out in Australia. So, and any thoughts on those two? Probably unlikely to crack the rotation, but Hazen I think is going to be pretty good if he sticks around a high point. Yeah, um, he's definitely got the pedigree with his brother being a high major player this year and going to be again next year. Yes. Um, I didn't, I didn't have too much on them. I don't think either of them will crack, be able to crack the rotation this year with a lot of returners and and really top-notch transfers for the Big South. Yeah. So overall like despite losing Miles like this team this team is looking really good. I had a lot of fun researching them honestly like when I was like looking at the guys they got I'm like they only lost Duke Miles like how were they able to get these like four guys that are like starter level players? Like it's crazy. I mean High Point has a lot of money for the Big South. Like they they're just so far above the Big South in terms of like resources and all that stuff, yeah. and it's it's working now. So, yeah, this is team number ninety six, but I think it's the furthest team down where you can truly say it's NCAA tournament or bust. Um, with the with the lineup they have, I think I'm gonna go that route. I would agree. How many, I how mean, many seniors they have and all these returners, quality yeah, I mean, players, especially after last year. Um, I mean, you I guess you can live with that result considering how far down the dumps they'd been before, but they better not fail to make it again this year. And I really want to see this team in a tournament because, and I wouldn't want to see this team in a tournament if I'm a higher seed because this offense is dangerous. Um, the key is really just making the defense a little bit better. Um, I mean, the defense was pretty bad last year. If that can get like a little bit better, this team could really be scary. And they had the pieces like, obviously Bodo Bodo is a, beast defensively um he's fine and hamilton is pretty solid but yeah i think they have the piece to be pretty competent defensively so we will see how that works out uh there'll also be a lot more benchmans on this team not a super deep team last year but obviously as the rotation goes that'll change but yeah i, I don't want to see a team in march if i'm a higher seed yeah and i i think uh, piggybacking off that point, I'm pretty sure the Big South tournament's hosted by the top seed. Yes, I remember. I do remember them hosting it last year. Yeah, so I I think I don't see any way they don't host it a second year in a row. So yeah, I I that would be extremely surprised if they do not win the conference somehow. They have way too much talent, a good coach, a lot of continuity. I'd be very surprised if they don't win at least a regular season in. I'm really hoping to see this team in a tournament because I was really hoping to see them in it last year, but 
this has to be the year. So yeah. Any, any other notes before we wrap up day 96? Um, I think keep an eye on Terry Anderson. You had a lot of praise for him earlier. And I think that's the, def- that's the defender of the piece that they need to, to be more uh, solidified on that end. Yes. Not, not getting a ton of hype, but he could have gone high major and I don't think people would have cared. Like, so definitely, definitely going to be someone I'm keeping my eye on, but yeah, that was number 96, the high point Panthers, high point fans come below, come below your thoughts. Um, we missed anything. You disagree with us in anything. We would love to hear your thoughts and yeah, day 95 tomorrow, make sure to tune in, turn on post notifications, see who it is.